everyone. Just getting everything set up and I'll be with y'all in a second. Can somebody out there in internet land um, let me know that you can hear me? Can somebody give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? That would be so helpful. Hi, Helen from Denver. Can you hear me, Pearl? Hi. Yes. Oh, thanks, Jen. Hi, Jen. It's so I'm so glad you're here. Oh, and thanks for all the thumbs up. Okay. I've never done this before. You can see my my pants down here. Um, so I have a setup where my phone is overhead and my computer is over there so that I can see your questions and answer your questions. Um, but I'm going to be embroidering. So if I don't get to your question right away, um, ask it again. Okay. I'll take a few, um, every few minutes, I'll try to look over at my computer and scroll through and make sure that I haven't missed anything. Hi, Dana. Oh my gosh. My old studio mate, Dana. We used to share a studio in Brooklyn. So fun. Okay. Welcome. So this is part one of the ice cream social stitch along. Um, we are going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to transfer the, um, design onto fabric if you're using the PDF. And then I'm going to start stitching and today I'm going to do the ice cream cones. Um, I won't get to all of them, but I'll do a couple of them in a couple of different methods. And, um, and then we'll just, I'll just answer questions and we'll talk about, um, ice cream. Hmm. You're having trouble hearing. Is anyone else having trouble hearing? Let me know. I hope it's not on my end. Okay. So if you have the PDF, this is the PDF, then you'll need to transfer it onto fabric first. And I think the best way to do that is to use the sticky um, fabric Solvi. Oh good, glad you can hear. Um, so this is made by this company, Sulky, and they make a number of different um, transfer materials, including this one, which is, um, the water soluble stabilizer. I use this one in my artwork a lot, but for transferring an image, um, for transferring the iron on embroidery pattern, I think that the sticky is the best. So the way that it works, it comes in sheets like this, um, that are, uh, eight and a half by 11. So they're perfect for your printer. I think you could technically run this through your printer. I haven't tried that, but I think that would work. Otherwise, you can lay this on top of your fabric like this. Don't peel the backing off yet. Lay it on top of your fabric. And then the best way to do it, I think, is to hold it up to the window. It's a, I'm, you can't see, but I'm holding it up to the window. It's a bright and sunny day here in Portland. And so what I would do is tape this to the window, tape the paper to the window, then tape the Sulky Solvi over the top and trace it. And you need to remember to trace it with a permanent marker, either a Sharpie or a Micron pen. I like these Micron pens a lot. Otherwise you can, pardon my reach, you can use um, an ultra fine point Sharpie. It's the one that has a tip like this. Um, and the reason you want to use a permanent marker is when you're done with all the embroidery, you're going to um, put your embroidery in the water and once you put it in the water, this stuff, the Sulky Solvi will, um, will disappear. And you wanna make sure that whatever marker you're using is bonded to the Sulky Solvi so it doesn't bleed onto your fabric. So I have one here. This is the um, sampler I have been, that I designed for Love Embroidery. And this is, I'm, I'm covering these cause these are the yet to be released, but this is the first section of the pie that I designed. These are the other ones that haven't been released yet either. It's a super sneak peek, but up, I can't show you anymore. Anyway, that's the best way to transfer it, I think. However, if you don't have any Sulky Solvi, what you could do 
is tape this paper to the window, the printout, and then tape a piece of your fabric over the top, like a piece of muslin, and transfer it directly onto your fabric. If you're transferring it onto a piece of muslin directly, then I recommend using a marker like this. This is called a Mark Begone pen. And you can see here, I'm gonna draw on this fabric. Um, you see this little blue mark? Um, when I get that mark wet, I'm just gonna lick my finger, you can see that it just um, goes away with water really easily. Now, spoiler alert, if you use these, um, and iron them, they become permanent. I like to make the joke of mark be gone, but once they get hot, mark be permanent. So be careful. And if you're um, if you're living somewhere where it's really hot right now, which a lot of us are um, in the northern hemisphere, then be careful not to leave it in your car on a hot day because it will not that will not end well for you. Um, okay. So let's see here, we need to, you know what? I realized I have everything I need to get started except my rubber fingers. I don't like stitching without these. They make everything so much better. Okay, oh, when it rains, it pours. Now I have lots of them. So I like to use thimbles um, and my favorite type of thimble to use is these are these rubber paper sorters. And this one's my favorite. They come in different sizes. This is the medium and I love it. I use it on my middle finger and I just find that it's so helpful for pulling my thread through the fabric. Okay, so I am going to be using this thread. It's um, DMC Pearl Cotton number 436. It's kind of a beige. And then later in the day, I'm gonna use this um, three strand floss from Valdani, but any brown would do. And I also think um, I hope that everybody uses their own color choices. I can't wait to see how everybody's sampler is a little bit different. Um, this one is really close, 437. I couldn't quite, um, couldn't quite decide. This one I think would have also been nice, 435. You can see these are all really close. And embroidery floss would also be great. I'm using pearl cotton because that's just my favorite thread to use. It's the easiest, I think, because it doesn't unravel. And I'm using um, a uh, milliner's needle. I like a size three milliner's needle. Aha, uh -huh. so um, I'm looking up at the comments. Jen was saying that she, she likes the friction pens, using those directly on the fabric as well. Um, and I agree, those are really cool. Word to the wise, don't use a red friction pen. And if you have questions about that, um, the friction pen is a pen that's designed, uh, it was designed for paper and it has an eraser so you can um, remove the marks with an eraser or with friction. Um, but they're also removable with heat. Sometimes they return if their fabric gets really cold. Um, so it's not, it's not a totally stable ink. And neither is, is this, neither are stable. Um, so word to the wise, just gotta know what you're getting into. And if you have more questions about the transferring process for for this PDF or for any other embroidery stitches, um, for any other embroidery projects, excuse me, then I recommend checking out the Creative Bug um, tutorial that I have about embroidery transfers. So I have my hoop, um, I have my fabric in a hoop. I placed it on top of another piece of fabric and I actually stitched it down so that it would fit in this big giant hoop. And then my hoop is um, clamped to the table so that I don't have to hold my hoop. So both of my hands are free. And that's mainly because of the camera. So I needed to have the camera up above me and have both hands free and not have the camera be bouncing around and not have the fabric bouncing around. So you could use a much smaller hoop. I think this is the perfect size for a six or seven inch hoop. I've got my needle threaded with pearl cotton. Um, the ends are tied together so it's two threads thick and I'm going to come up um, at the bottom of this uh, ice cream cone. This um, hard pack ice cream cone. I have a question for you guys. 
um, first I'll just say that I'm doing the back stitch. So I just want one stitch forward and one stitch ahead and then I'm gonna go back and fill it in. So that's the back stitch. Of all the embroidery stitches, you know, there's hundreds of embroidery stitches. I have loads of books. I've taught loads of workshops on all different embroidery stitches. And the one that I use the most often is the back stitch. It's pretty plain. So for this um, stitch along, I'm gonna do a few different stitches. Um, I'm gonna, today I'm gonna show back stitch and couching. But if you are wanting to um, know more stitches or to get even more ideas, I highly recommend checking out my videos on Creative Bug where there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots more stitches um, in the tutorial videos. The original sampler, the sequel sampler, drawing stitches, and then the most recent one is the schoolhouse sampler. And all of those have, I think each one has between 15 and 31 stitches. So. That's a, that's a lot, a lot of options. Whoops, see, I made this little loop. Um, just slow down and work out the kinks. It is not too late to get a sampler, Amy. Um, oh my gosh, my friend Amy, I know you're homesick with COVID. Um, you, it's not too late. You can get the sam printed sampler or the PDF. Um, I would, it's not too late at all. And it's not too late if you're just joining now for the stitch along and you want to um, join, but you feel like you missed it. Or if you're here and you wanna do it, but you have to run out cause it's time for you to go to um, wherever you're going, that don't worry because when this stitch along is over, I'm gonna upload it to Instagram and then I'll also save it to YouTube so you can watch it anytime. Oh, thanks, Veronica. Thanks for the um, creative bug compliment. I appreciate that. So I'm just going along up this line, getting closer and closer to the ice cream. And my question that I started to ask at the beginning was um so this cone over here is soft serve with sprinkles this cone and so is this one is um not soft serve it's the kind that comes in the carton which some people call hard pack ice cream and i'm wondering um what do you call ice cream that's not soft serve do you call it hard? some people i've also seen it called hard serve um, okay, so I'm getting to the end. I got to the end of that. So now I'm just going to move my needle over one little spot and we go down this way. I think what I'm going to end up doing, um, I started out using number, I believe it was four. Let's see. Oh no, it looks like it's 435 or maybe it's 436. Anyhow, I'm gonna use all three of these colors as I stitch the cone to give it kind of a modeled effect, um, just like a real, a real waffle cone would have. So these, um, this grid pattern, I think is small enough that I'm going to do one stitch for each of these um, edges of the diamonds. So now I could go over here and just fill in each diamond as I go. Or you could do it in straight lines, totally up to you hand packed. Hmm, interesting. That's another word for um, this ice cream. So many different kinds of ice cream in the world. There's a new place that opened up near my house in Portland called Nico's Ice Cream. And they take um, hand packed, hard packed, however you want to call it. Maybe we could say old fashioned 
vanilla and they put it in this contraption with fresh fruit. I got mine with um, raspberries and marion berries. And then the machine kind of like grinds it up um, and then um, m turns it into soft serve, but it starts out as hard serve. It, it sort of reminds me of, you know, um, when I was a kid, um, I had a friend who the, they would wait until their ice cream was partly melted and then mix it up in the bowl so that it tasted more like soft serve. And it's sort of that consistency. Um, it was really, really good. If you happen to be in Portland and it happens to be your birthday week, you should go to Nico's because you can get a free cone on your birthday, which is what I did a couple of weeks ago. So I am getting close to the end of this thread. And what I'm gonna do is, so I wanna leave it so that I have enough thread on the back to tie it off. So I'm gonna send my needle down and then later today, when when um, when this video is over, I'm gonna flip the hoop over and I'm just gonna tie overhand knots with these threads because I'm not gonna crawl underneath the table and I don't wanna take it out of the hoop. So I'm just gonna leave it hanging there. I'm gonna cut it, cut it off. I'm gonna use my, very carefully cut it, so I just cut it right there. And then when I'm done, I'll flip it over and tie the knots and get it all um, organized. I am using, great question, I'm using um, size eight pearl cotton. And this is the one I'm loading now is DMC 435. When I wrote my book, um, which now is like eight years ago, um, maybe nine even, when I was writing my book, it took a couple years to write my book, um, I reached out to DMC and they sent me one of every color in their pearl cotton collection, which was so amazing and generous. And so um, I feel very fortunate to have um, so many colors and I have them have them organized in bins so it's not just DMC pearl cotton it's all kinds of pearl cotton and, and other threads and some embroidery floss like this one but I rarely use embroidery floss I mostly just use pearl cotton um, so this is the brown bin um, so when I was getting ready for today's Stitch along, I just went downstairs to where I keep all my threads. I have a big bookshelf and um, each bin has a different color. And that's the, that's the brown bin. Um, Amy mentioned sugar pine. Sugar pine is amazing. It's this really cool drive-in out in the Columbia Gorge and they um, serve beautiful soft serve you could just get a plain old soft serve cone, but you can. They also make really inventive sundaes, and they have all kinds of interesting, um, you know, magic shells and um, you know fresh berries, and all kinds of things. I really like the Larch Mountain Sunday. I forget all, what's on it. Some kind of lavender syrup, or I don't know. Everything there is so good, and they make the best grilled cheese. They have. Um, this Japanese milk bread and then um, really good cheese and they make it in a toaster oven so every bite is really crispy and uh, it's just it's just incredible why am I using this thread choice Veronica is asking why am I using this thread choice and the reason is is I just love pearl cotton because it doesn't have to be separated like embroidery floss I find it so much easier to work with it's also shiny I like the fact that it's a bit shiny. Um, and I also uh, 
love that it's neat and tidy. So it comes in these little balls and um, unlike embroidery floss that you have to contend with once you've gotten it, once you've gotten those papers off, which they seem to come off on their own almost immediately, then you need to figure out something to do with it. And a lot of people use clothespins. Some people use these little um, paper or plastic bobbin um, doodads, but it's just a pain. I'd rather embroider than deal with organizing my embroidery floss. So I just, I really have become a super fan of pearl cotton. It's my favorite and it comes in lots of colors and um, I'm not using it for this particular project, but for other projects like the picnic sampler and the yo-yo sampler, I designed um, my own collections of pearl cotton and those are hyper colorful and really fun because they're variegated. And so um, next, next week for the second section of the stitch along, I'm going to be um, using those threads and talking more about those. Um, oh, this, this question, um, somebody says, we go, we go, we go zoom. I wonder if it's we go zoom or we go zoom. Um, says I'll be dropping into Frankie and Joe's this week. Is that an ice cream place? Tell us more about it. Um, and Helen is saying, what's your first memory of ice cream? Mine is when I was 10. It was the country's bicentennial and 31 flavors had a special bicentennial flavor that was red, white, and blue. Fun. Yeah, um, I'll answer that question. First, I'm going to answer Julie's question um, about the color. I'm using these three colors, DMC 435, 436, and 437. I'm using all three, but they're very close, so you could easily get away with just using one. But any any color will do. I, I think a tan, any color kind of tan would be nice, and I also think I'm out of thread again, so I'm going to send my needle down and re-thread. Um, I think this, it'd be really fun to do like hot pink or purple or all different colors. Um, you certainly don't need to co follow my choice, color choices, but if you want to, that's totally fine too. One of my, um, I, ha I have a lot of memories of ice cream and, and actually my cookbook club, it's this group of women that I adore. We, um, get together once a month and um, have a potluck based on a different cookbook every month. And we also just love to sit around and talk about cookbooks. Um, and a couple of the people in the group started a podcast. And um, this last week, the um, ice cream episode dropped and I was a guest on the podcast talking about ice cream. And so one of my favorite memories of ice cream is that my family had a... Uh, um, we had one of those old hand cranked ice cream makers and we had a big party and invited all my cousins over um, in August when the peaches are ripe in Michigan. And we made this homemade peach ice cream and still to this day it was one of my all time favorite ice creams. And oh, there's just nothing better than a ripe peach. Oh my gosh, we go Zoom. Frankie and Joe's is a Seattle-based ice cream shop with all plant-based yummy. Yum, I'm going to Seattle tomorrow. I'm coming to Seattle tomorrow for a, a um, short vacation with my mom and my kids. Um, I'll try to check it out. Cool, oh my gosh, love it. Um, if you have any other Seattle recommendations for fun stuff to do with a three-year-old and a six-year-old, send me a DM. I would really appreciate that. Um, my other favorite um, ice cream memory is that I worked at a soft serve place called the Dairy Cream in um, Michigan where I grew up. And that was one of my all-time favorite jobs. I think about it all the time. And I actually was just in Michigan um, a couple of weeks ago um, with my kids um, for my dad's memorial and for a family reunion and I took my kids to the Dairy Cream and I was joking with the kid that was helping us that um, that I used to work there and I I said oh I don't know if my 
company discount still applies and everyone laughed. Of course, that was like over 20 years ago, um, but that was fun. I loved, we had these, one of the fun things about working there is we made these mystery bars. And so if you messed up an order, say somebody ordered a chocolate ice cream and you made strawberry or something, then we had this um, plastic tub that we put all the all the mistake um, ice creams in. And, um, you know, that it didn't happen very often that, that there was a mistake, but when you did, you put it in there. And the only rule was that you couldn't put cones in there and you also weren't supposed to put bananas. Um, but anything else could go in there. So it could be, you know, all sorts of strange flavors like m mint chip and um, raspberry all smashed together. And um, when the box got full, we would smash it all out and then freeze it in a really cold freezer and then cut them into these long kind of popsicle shapes and then put a popsicle stick in each one and dip it in magic shell. And, um, and then we'd put out a sign that said, mystery bars available and people went nuts for them. And you know, you didn't know what was in there. It was before, it was before a time when there were so many um, known allergies, you know, um, they don't, they don't make those anymore at the dairy cream. And also, I, you know, there's a new, a new owner, but I have often daydreamed about going back to the dairy, like just working a few days at the dairy cream in my adult life. It sounds so fun. Oh my gosh, the headquarters of Baskin Robbins in Burbank. That's fun. Um, I took my kids to Baskin and Robbins the other day. Um, it's really close to the library that we go to here in Portland. And my son got this flavor. I tried to discourage him from getting it because it was blue. And it was called um, Day at the Beach or something. And, uh, and it was this blue ice cream that was salted vanilla flavor and it had these little candied fish in it and it also had sand um and it looked so gross to me I mean food if it's not blueberry pie in my opinion food should not be blue um I just don't like things that are art I a lot of the times I don't like things that are artificially flavored however I really love Jolly Ranchers so you know there goes that theory anyway um, it was delicious. It was a really surprisingly good ice cream. And, um, Leo said, see, I, I told you, mom, I, I thought it would be really good. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad, I'm glad he liked it. Oh, it's been so stinking hot here in Portland. Um, I know it's been hot lots of places this summer and I'm, I'm not a fan, not a fan not really a big fan of summertime, although I am a fan of ice cream. My other favorite ice cream place here in Portland is this um, shop called Ebb and Bean, and it's a soft serve place too. They make really inventive soft serve flavors, including lots of non-dairy soft serve flavors. Okay, closing in on the end of this cone. I really like, I like salt and straw as well. That's the sort of classic Portland place. It's so expensive though. It's, it's almost, it's like almost $10 for a waffle cone with a scoop or two of ice cream. Feels a bit hard to stomach, but it is really, really good. How am I gonna make it to the end of this cone with this thread? Oh my gosh. Yeah, Helen is say, saying best kid flavor is bubble gum with actual gum. Yeah, I used to love that flavor as well. I remember just getting it and like stashing every little piece of that gum in, in my cheek, 
you know, so that when the ice cream was gone, I could chew the gum, which was not very good, but the idea of it was really good. Yeah. Gosh, why do kids like those flavors? Like Blue Moon, too. Ugh. It's not a flavor I would ever order as an adult. Or Superman. I don't know if that's a flavor out here. It is in Michigan. Superman ice cream. It's like, I don't, I think it, I want to say it's sh Sherbert which is different from sorbet. Why is, why is sherbet different some, from sorbet? I think sherbet has a little bit of milk in it and sorbet is just, um, is dairy free. Is that right? Chime in if you know what sherbet is. My grandparents often had sherbet in the fridge when I was a kid. <laughs> it was orange sherbet in a big plastic tub. Oh my gosh, Trace Luna is saying, I just heard about a collaboration between salt and straw and imaginary authors. Edible perfume that you spray on your ice cream so it will smell and taste good. Whoa, I gotta try that. That sounds interesting. Ice cream has no scent. Hmm, ice cream has no scent. That's kind of blowing my mind right now. But... It has so much taste. I wonder if it has no scent because it's cold. Must have something to do with it. I wonder if that's why you're meant to... Um, I read once. I'm, I don't, I'm not really a wine drinker. I don't know a lot about wine. But I went to a, a wine tasting in Napa Valley once. And they said that, you know, the cheaper the wine, the better an idea it is to chill it because um, it kind of dulls the flavor out. I remember being surprised that they were serving um, white wine that was not cold. Um, and they said, well, that's because we have a lot of confidence in our, in our wine, and it's not, um, it's not, we don't need to dull down the flavor with, uh, with ice or by chilling it. Superman on the East Coast. Oh my. Julie says, I've seen a flavor called Play-Doh that was bright yellow. Gross. <laughs> Ooh. I, I must admit, I really like the smell of Play-Doh. And I, um, I saw once that there's a company that makes a Play-Doh scented perfume, which sounds disgusting. And yet I would be super curious to try it not try it in that I would buy a bottle of it but I'd like to try it in um you know if I was walking through a mall which I haven't in so many years but um oh best treat rainbow sherbet in a punch bowl with fingernail and fruit punch oh I think she means ginger ale <laughs> fingernail oh that sounds like one of those flavors that salt and straw would come up with, but you know, I, I think that's too far even for salt and straw. Um, do you know what is really good is a Boston cooler, which is, um, vanilla ice cream and, um, Verner's, um, or I suppose you could use any ginger ale, but Verner's is the best. Oh, Jenny's ice cream came out with a bagel, everything bagel ice cream. I heard about that and I watched a bunch of videos of people trying it, but I, I hadn't, I haven't tried it. It sounds so interesting. Jenny's ice cream is amazing. Yum, 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 yum. Okay, I'm gonna go on to do another stitch now, um, couching. So I'm using two different colors of thread and I'm using um, the um, this yellower brown is a Gutterman um, thread that happens to be polyester. And this one is a Valdani um, three strand, or it might even be just two strands, I can't quite tell. Yeah, I think it's two strand embroidery floss. Um, so I have one in one needle and one in the other, and I'm gonna use the, um, the more mustardy one to attach the thread. So I'll, I'll show what I mean here. So this thread is gonna come up like this, and I'm just gonna lay it down here. 
and I'm gonna um, attach it to the fabric. I'm gonna move it back and forth with my left hand and attach it to the fabric with, with this needle that has mustard thread in it. Somebody is saying, Californians ought to remember thrifty drugstores, ice cream counter, or carnation dairy. Yum, 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 yum. You know, I've never been to a drugstore that had um, an ice cream counter. I've always wanted to. Oops, caught in the knot in the back. Whoop, I love that sound. Okay. So you can see I kind of pull this off the edge and then pull it back in the other direction to go down and that makes the Makes it attach nice and easily to the ice cream cone. One of my other favorite memories of working at the um, Dairy Cream in Pentwater, Michigan is um, that we were working, it was towards the end of the summer, so it was starting to get late at night, and we were there. I was there in the evening with a group of. Darn it, a little not in my thread. Sorry to interrupt myself. Anyways, there in the evening, it was really slow. No one was coming in and we were making um, ice cream sandwiches. So to do that, we'd have you know, a, like a, um, a tray full of cookies and um, somebody would uh, take the tray full of cookies and put a swirl of ice cream on top of each cookie um, and then put another ice cream uh, excuse me, another cookie on top and then chocolate chips. Um, so fun. And while we were doing that, somebody left the ice cream machine on. And so we somehow, I don't know how it happened, we went out into the other room and there was this mountain, mountain of soft serve on the floor. And the person I was working with was... Um, was really upset and was like, I can't, you know, she couldn't believe she had done it. And I, and I, I think I, I doubt I said anything cause I was really shy at the time, but in hindsight, what I wish I would have said is like, guys, this is an opportunity. We need to get out hot fudge and peanuts and have like <laughs> the world's biggest Sunday on the floor of this place because, um, it's just going to go to waste. So we may as well eat it. <laughs> Gosh, so much fun. Okay, so I'm doing one more stitch with this guy. I'm gonna send that needle to the back and I'm gonna bring that needle back up right here. So that's where I'm gonna start next is on this line right here. So going underneath with picking up this needle again for the first time since we started, going underneath and then I'm gonna bring it back up right here. Mmm, thrifty banana split flavor. Yum. And then Amy's saying she used to love UDF for ice cream and milkshakes. I've been, I've totally been there. Um, we both have a um, Ohio connection. My ex-wife is from Cincinnati, so we went to UDF and, and Grater's ice cream. Oh my gosh, the Grater's Black Raspberry Chip is one of the best ice creams I've ever had. So delicious. I really like the way this couching stitch looks for the ice cream cone. I'm doing, I was doing them pretty close together, but I actually think they could be a little bit farther apart and still be fine. In high school in the 80s, you could get a single for 15 cents and a double for 25 at the thrifty. Oh my gosh. Gosh, the prices on food are so crazy. The prices on everything are so crazy right now. Um, you know, I was complaining about the price of ice cream at Salt and Straw, but when I went back to the Dairy Cream this summer, I hadn't been there in probably at least six or seven years. And um, I was surprised that the cones there, even a small, even a kid's cone, I think was like might've been $2. 
and uh, sort of put salt and straw in perspective for me. I mean, I really, I don't, I don't remember them being 15 cents, but I think a kid's, a kid's size cone, which by the way, was also smaller when I was a kid. Um, we had these soft serve, we served a soft serve kid's cone that was about this tall and it was a teeny little cone. Um, and I, I, I want to say it was like 50 cents or something. It was really inexpensive. A lot of people used to get them for their dogs. And we served, you could order them with no extra cost. You could get eyes, these little candy eyes on your cone, which they still have at the Dairy Cream. That made me really happy that we could do that, my kids and I. I like to think that I think they're still at the age where they think it's cool that I worked at an ice cream place and like to talk all about it. I, I'm bracing myself for the fact that that will not last and just trying to enjoy it. Enjoy being cool. I'm a cool mom. At least I think so. <laughs> oh man. This is making me want to go get ice cream today. It's so hot out. I'm almost out of this mustard thread. I have to reload go under with this guy and come up I think I can do about two more stitches so uh, clearly I'm not gonna get done with all these ice cream cones I'm gonna um, I probably won't even finish this second one just wanted to show you the two different methods that I'm gonna use for the ice cream cones. I think I'm gonna continue as back stitch and then couching for the um, for the soft serve cones. Although um, you could use any number of stitches. You know, uh, it would be so cool to do satin stitch. It might take forever, um, but a split stitch would look really good. I think even. Um, Chain stitches might look really cool. Running stitch, a whipped back stitch might look really cool. I'm gonna do a, a whipped, um, a whipped, sorry, I'm looking at my notes, a whipped back stitch next week for the soft serve. Um, so next week, um, in about one week, August 8th, I'm gonna come back and do the second um, Instagram Live and that one will be in the evening, um, 6 p.m. Um, and I'll show, um, I'm gonna be working on the ice cream in that segment. Oops, I need to stop doing this one. I'm gonna re-thread re -thread my needle. So, got this little needle here. Some more of this business. Oh, um, McFred74 asked, are we couching all the cones? No, I'm couching this cone. The one over here that I'm pointing to is all backstitch. So I did this one all in backstitch, this one all in couching. And what I'm thinking is that I'm gonna alternate. So every other one will be backstitch and every other one will be couching. I really like the way the couching looks. Um, curious what y'all are planning to do. despite having designed a lot of embroidery samplers that use fancy stitches, I, um, I most often use 
pretty simple ones like the back stitch and chain stitch. Um, but whenever I release a new sampler design, I'm, I'm, whoops, what am I doing? Oh, I switched. Oh, I'm gonna, just gonna go with it. I was laying down this thread using this one to attach it and I, I lined myself up to do it the opposite. So I'm just gonna go with it. I think that'll be cool to have one line that's a little different. I don't know if you can see close enough, but this one, the the line, the lines on these are the darker brown, the mustard going over the top, and on this one, it's the opposite. Come up here for the next one. I'll go back to my original color palette or color combo for this next line. go it's the last line of that right now this is a pretty big gap it's about a half and maybe it's about an inch actually but that's okay I'm not gonna this isn't a garment that I'm gonna wear so I'm gonna just carry my thread all the way from here where I ended up over to here and that's okay no one will be the wiser that is not something you'd want to do you would get dinged points for that in a home ec class, but guess what this is? It is not a home ec class. It's just a fun stitch along and no one is going to be judging the back of your embroidery. Mine is going to be very messy because um, I'm not nodding off as I go. I'm just leaving these big hanging threads at the back. Okay, a couple questions. Are you putting a stitch at each line crossing or more often? I'm not doing it each at each line crossing. However, I think that would be a good way to do it. Um, I'm curious how the cross couching is gonna go. Um, I'm not quite sure how that's gonna end up looking. This is, it's all happening live and I'm gonna have to respond to that problem when I get to it. But let's not call it a problem, let's call it a challenge. Um, Kathy 101 is asking, what size thread am I using? I'm using two kinds of thread. I'm using a three strand embroidery floss from Valdani. Yeah, we can see here. I don't know if you can see that. It says three strand floss and it's color 196. Um, most embroidery floss is six strands, but this one is three strands and I'm using all three. So that's the Valdani. That's what um, doing this lines with and then to attach it down I'm using this I would call this like button weight um, sewing thread made by um, Guterman and it's 100% polyester but it kind of has this sort of linen cotton look I quite like it um, and it's about the same um, weight and thickness as a size 12 pearl cotton. Um, for the back stitch over here on this one, I used size eight pearl cotton, um, number 435, 436, and 437. Kind of a mishmash of those three colors. You're doing, um, Redwood Sequoia, you're doing all the lines across, then tack stitches at intersections. So cool. Um, I always double up my threads. Dab Foster's asking if I double the thread. I always double the thread, partly because it's so much easier, um, but mostly because I like that thickness. So yeah, I'm using three strands and, and tied together. So it's technically I'm using six strands at once. Um, 
um, Redwood Sequoia, I can't quite picture what you're saying. I hope that um, when the live is over, I hope you'll post a picture. Um, you can use the hashtag drop class samplers um, uh, so that we can all see what you mean. And I'll post it to my, if you post a picture, um, I'll post it to my stories or send me a DM if you have a private account and I can repost to the stories if that's okay with you so that everybody can see what you're, what you're doing. And actually, if everybody could do that, that would be so cool because then um, I'll post all of them um, to my stories and then it's a true stitch along because everybody can see what, um, what everybody else is doing and how you're approaching these stitches. So I am going to do one more line across this way and then I'm going to wrap up the stitch along for now. Um, I'm going to work on these over the course of this week. I'm going to work on these um, ice cream cones. I'll probably be working on them tomorrow on the Amtrak train to Seattle. Um, and I'll be posting some progress pictures and I hope that you will also be posting progress pictures. I can't wait to see. Um, I really can't wait to see how your stitches look. And I can't wait to see what stitches you're using. It's going to be so fun. Getting to the end here. Redwood Sequoia, I have a feeling you have a really smart idea about how to do these that is perhaps faster than mine. And if that's the case, I might switch to yours for the other cones. All right, I'm gonna one more, get out of there. One more stitch and go back down underneath with this one. I'm gonna go back underneath with this one. There we go, and I'll tie those off on the back side um, off camera. So let me take my rubber finger off. Um, if there, so um, I wanted to say two things. Um, for the ice cream sampler stitch along, if everybody could please tag their images that they're posting on Creative Bug um, with the hashtag drop cloth samplers, that would be amazing. And that way we can all see what you're doing. Um, and, oh, Redwood Sequoia was my idea in the 30 day challenge class on Creative Bug. Oh, cool, cool. I can't wait to see what you're doing. Okay, so to wrap up, um, the ice cream social stitch along is going to take place in five segments. Today was the first, so there are four more, and I just posted to the grid the other dates. Um, the times vary because I wanted to make the times um, accessible for a wide number of people, so hopefully there's at least one or two that you can tune in for. And don't worry if you can't turn in, tune in live. The uh, the information, the video is going to be saved to Instagram and I'm going to go um, upstairs to my office and upload it to YouTube this afternoon as well. So um, hopefully those will work for you. And um, I love it when you all come live because it's so fun to have um, your questions and your input and your ideas about ice cream. Um, Cool, Pearl, Pearl, Pearl saying she's gonna use a color changing tan and brown. Love it, oh my gosh, I love variegated threads the most. They're my absolute favorite. Um, okay, I'm gonna get um, the rest of this put away and get the video uploaded. And I'll see you guys back here for another IGTV on August 8th, but I'll be posting progress from Amtrak tomorrow on my way to Seattle and on my way back later this week. I can't wait to see how everybody stitches theirs and I can't wait to stitch along with you all again on August 8th, a week from tomorrow. Okay, thanks friends, bye.